It's our community. You know, I always tell you that I want you to meet the neighbors. Well, this time, Wyatt Townley is truly my neighbor. We both live in Leewood, and we kind of back up to one another uh, in our lovely, uh, each in our lovely home. So Wyatt Townley is indeed my neighbor, and I want you to meet her. She um, is the Poet Laureate of Kansas, which I think is a wonderful, wonderful honor. She um, and her work has been nominated for the Pushcart Prize. Uh, it's been read by Garrison Keeler on NPR. That was fun. Featured by Ted Couser in his American Life and Poetry, and Poetry column. And she's appeared hundreds of venues ranging from the Paris Review to Newsweek. Mm -hmm. And so I guess I would be correct in saying, Wyatt, that as a poet, you have arrived. Ah. <laughs> I well, think so. I'm sitting here, Mary, so thank you. I think so. Thank you know, you. she said something really kind of interesting that I want to share with you. She said, poetry is a place we can return to in all kinds of weather with its innate power to heal and comfort, transform and inspire. And this one is what I really like. She said, its porch light is always on. True. That's true. We can always come home to poetry. Yeah. But you didn't start out as a poet, did you? You know, I, I've, I've pursued a dual track, mm -hmm. a dual career track throughout uh -huh. my life from a very early age. I was uh, always wanted to be a dancer and do that impossible thing. And I also always fell back onto the page. From, a very er from childhood, I've been writing poems. You always poems. wrote. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. or, or I'm using the metaphor, the, the dance metaphor, dancers often fall, and uh, the best place to fall as a poet is right under the page, so um, mixing those up. But um, always done both since uh, I was a child, and I must say, both have saved my life. Well, I always have, w when I first met you, I thought, I. I I mean, you look like a dancer. You're, you know, you're tall and slender, and you move, you move in a very fluid fashion, or I think so, as far as I'm kind, kind of galumph along. But you move in a very fluid fashion, and you, you look like a dancer. And I, do you think there's any relationship between dancing and poetry? Uh, absolutely. I think, um, I think it really boils down to the kinetic. Uh, there's poetry, there's poetry in motion. They're really doing the same thing. The words are trying to move from the page mm -hmm. into the reader. And the dancer and the yogi is trying to move from within out. And so they're sort of crossing the bridge, the same bridge, but in reverse order. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I, I'm going to read a little and I'm going to ask you to read in a minute, but. The breathing field is um, about poetry and uh, yoga, is it not? Mm -hmm. And so that sort of cements what you're just saying, that bridge between the two. It was such a lovely project to work on because it married these disparate, uh, some would say polar, parts of my life. Um, for a long time I felt that poetry and motion were on opposite sides of uh, a very long field, um, one being the most arguably refined of the nonverbal and the other being the most refined of the verbal and never the twain. Uh, and so how lovely, and really they have come together in my life now, and how lovely to have a specific project, uh, a, a book of poems about yoga, really, to help the reader have the experience that the yogi has on the mat um, as, as, the, as the reader lifts that experience from the mat of the page right into the well, consciousness. Well, I would like to take the liberty of reading uh, one of your poems. I, I really like, you know, sometimes um, poets are kind of obtuse, and I, I, I really enjoy reading your poetry because it, it's meaningful to a regular person <laughs> like me. And this is called, the, it, it, this is from The Breathing Field, Meditations on Yoga, and this is called The Swimming Lesson. Mm -hmm. And I like this. It says, go under. Put your whole head in like the potato that grows below the feet, below concrete, and the cars that carry us. We get up and dress up and build up and grow up. The potato grows down. It underlies everything we have made or said 
or haven't. The potato shows us where we are heading. Dive in. Put your whole life into it. I think that's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I'm always happy to uh, attempt to write Poets on Assignment. That was written for a poetry th anthology um, published by Gloria Vando um, and Helicon 9. And um, how do you write a, po a poem about a potato? Well, first you mix your metaphors and you potato goes down and then you make it into a swimming lesson and up, up it sprang comes. that. <laughs> So. The vine peeps oh, out. Yes. <laughs> How lovely. That's funny. Well, you know, Gloria Vando has been um, a very large influence on poetry through um, her magazine. Um, I forgot. Uh, Helicon Nine. Helicon and, and her press. And, of course, she founded the Writer's Place with her husband, Bill Hickok. Yeah. But the Writer's Place has kind of come into its own, too, I think. Don't you think so? I think it has. Yeah. And it's been a lot of hard work. A lot of hard work, I know. Um, you know, I, your first job was not as a poet. Your first job wasn't as a poet when you first went to work. Let's see. What was my first job? <laughs> as a <laughs> <laughs> My first job. Well, I guess I, I was a professional dancer first. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And then as you, uh, but you never were a professional in the writing business or in the advertising business or anything like that? Not in advertising, no. uh, although I think poetry uses the same muscles as um, ad writers in the compression and distillation of the message just serves a different purpose. Um, let's see, first job. Uh, well, you know, I began, I, I mean, it takes a while to get paid as a poet. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. But see, <laughs> so, that's the whole so point. So if yes, that's what you're yeah. referring to as yeah. a job, but your first job as a page, as a poet, is to land and eventually marry that page. Yeah, it is. That, that's you know, the only job. Well, you, you pulled have. up a, a word here uh, when we talked about uh, advertising. The idea in a, with a good poet is to be able to compress that idea into um, well-chosen words. Don't you think so? Well, sure. Yeah. Uh, and I love what Coleridge says about poetry. He says, Samuel Coleridge, uh -huh. as we all remember, uh, prose is words in the best order. Uh -huh. Very fine definition, would you say? Of I would. I would. Poetry is the best words in the best order. See? And that's difficult. And that is a lifelong lesson. You could drink from that uh, lake for your entire life as a writer. That's a writer's definition of poetry. Best words, best order. <laughs> well, what could be simpler? <laughs> I can't think of anything, but you know, it, it's, a, it's a gift to be able to uh, refine one's words into a sentence like that. I mean, that, that is a gift. Just a lifetime. But you know, I, I would have to say that your life has really been shaped by the confluence of poetry and poetry in motion. True. Um, and that has shaped your whole life. Um, you taught yoga for a long I do time. Teach, I do teach yoga. And it, it does, with this Poet Laureate um, mm, season heating up again, um, it really does save me on a daily basis and keeps me grounded as I go out. What do you think there is about yoga? And, and I want to pull that word out, grounded again. What is it about... Um, yoga that does seem to relax, to focus one's mental energies, to keep them grounded. What, what is there in, in the practice of yoga that does I, that? I would say two things. Um, one is establishing and dwelling within the deep center of the body, which itself relates to the earth. And the second thing, and, and uh, crucial, is the breath. Uh, getting in touch with the breath as it runs along the spine, up and down the spine, up and down the spine. It's, p it's plumbing a secret path within the body that once, once cleared helps all the uh, motions and poses fall into place, not to mention life at large. See, I think that's so interesting because I know that when we first chatted, you put great uh, emphasis on learning to breathe correctly. Absolutely, and that's then the poet's breath. That becomes the poet's breath. So the wind we take in and then transform and the wind that transforms us. See, I, I just, I think that's beautiful. I know that one of your other wonderful contributions, you, this was a commission, 
that you wrote the uh, Kansas City Ballet, the first uh, 50 years yes. of its history. That was quite a project. But the, I would recommend it, and, and I'm certainly not a dancer, and I know little about ballet, but this is a beautiful book. And the pictures in there are mm -hmm. of people that have spent their lives, um, um, I think maybe they may not be poets, but they are poets with their bodies. Yes, oh, absolutely. And I, th uh, some of them are names that we would all recognize, and it's a, it's a lovely book. So I Thank congratulate you. you on that, and I wanted to be sure that you saw it because it's worth looking at. Thank so. you. I, you know, I, I sit here and I talk to you, and I think, isn't it wonderful the, the way that you have been able to focus your life um, on the things that are really important to your soul? And I don't think I'm that's so easy. I'm very fortunate, mm -hmm. but it really wasn't a choice. It was a necessity. It, it really, poetry has saved my life. I think that's, I, I do, I think that's interesting. Uh, I, but, I, but I think you live um, a double life, really, and that is straddling the world of motion with your dance and your yoga, and you call it stasis, and, and then you quote Hemingway's um, uh, words, and it's uh, to apply the seat of the pants to the seat of the chair. <laughs> Pretty good writing lesson. Is it easy or is it um, gut-wrenching to write poetry, to write and all? Both. Um, Both. Look, people ask this all the time. I have no secret. I don't know what's going to happen when I sit down. All I know is that I have to sit down. You sit down. You've got the page, or some people. I, I, I don't write poetry uh, on the computer. That's the revision process, so I need the page and, and a pencil with a good eraser. Well, actually, it doesn't matter because I scratch. But uh, a lot of scrap paper and uh, just sitting down and then giving yourself permission to fail uh, all over the page, all, all over the place. <laughs> so, so it's not, I mean, it, I, and I think this is a point to make, it doesn't just flow out like water out of a spring. On occasion. On occasion. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, and you think, I, whoa, can, how can I do that again? <laughs> on occasion. Well, it's really a matter of getting, uh, look, the body is mostly water, right? Yeah. And so it, we are in flow. We may not feel it, but we, can we get in touch with that? Same thing with the process of creation, I think. Can we... Can we, I mean, going with the flow, it's a cliche, but it's, it's, really, it's really so. How do we get out of the way? How, it's, it's a matter of really removing obstacles. Do you set goals for yourself that each day you will spend so much time writing? Well, or no, how do you do uh, that? no, but I do find, uh, using a lot of metaphor, but um, like the termite, who, do you know about termites? Termites must I don't return. Know a lot. <laughs> they, it's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, it's poetry. Mm -hmm. Termites must every day return to the soil to drink for nourishment. They uh -huh. must, on a daily basis, uh -huh. get out of your house or wherever they are, get out of the wood pile, and return to the earth. Mm -hmm. So, what a beautiful metaphor. It that's is. the poet. That's the poet touching touching earth, or. Um, getting into the ocean or, you know, touching down on the page every day, every day. I don't have a schedule. My schedule's nuts, but, um, but I do, I do try do. to like but, the But termite. you feel um, a compulsion to write? Compulsion, no, but no. a need. A need. Yes. See, I, didn't, I was looking for the right word because I'm not sure what that is. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's a thirst. And it, ha, I think it's a, such a wonderful honor to become the Poet Laureate it sure of the is. state. I mean, I... It sure is. It's I, a great honor, and it's a, a tremendous responsibility. Well, really. that it and, is. And, of course, a delight as, as I wander well, around and true. meet that's really true. interesting people. But I want to I wanna ask you if you will take, and I want to show you this wonderful book called The Afterlives of Trees, and I wonder if you will take yours and read uh, some of your poetry for us. If you would want to pick a couple, there it is, The Afterlife of Trees, and uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful little book. And I'm going to ask you if you will pick a couple and read from your own work. All right. Would well, you do that? Sure. Oh, um, good. Okay. All right. Um, Wyatt Townley, the Poet Laureate of Kansas. One of the, thank you, and one of the, um, I think greatest functions of, of poetry is, I think, consolation 
reminding in me, reminding us that we are not alone. So um, this one's called How It Is. The sun drags worlds behind it, planets at its ankles. It hauls you out of bed, down the hall, to the kitchen where spoon by spoon the sun draws itself through your body. This goes on and on, one foot after another through the usual rooms, while stars are dropping off the map. The sun drags the pen across the page and out the sides of your eyes. The sky spins your tears into a poem that falls back on graves of lovers and gardens of strangers. The sun, without fail, pulls the coat of loneliness over your arms as you walk in your own footprints until you reach the place where we can read these words together. I think that's just beautiful. And I want to, while you're thinking about the next poem that you want to read, I'm taking a little, um, I'm uh, uh, asserting myself here, and you wrote one about the poem with, that I really liked. It says, the poem, that's the title, it says, waits on your pillow and in your shoes each morning. Behind the drapes you draw, it's on the empty swing set that flanks the frozen creek. It's the towel that dries your face. It follows you around the house like a pull toy, from stove to chair and out to the mailbox where nothing has arrived. It bumps up every blessed stair. It's on the phone, which is for you. It's in the coffee you drink, in the ink you arrange, on the page, in the wood before the paper, the earth that clutched the tree that grew to fill a sky where snow falls into shapes of things shapes of things once you made but can't get your arms around anymore where it also is. There is nowhere it hasn't got to in the unsold seats in the space between tables where the words mix like smoke between this breath and the next in the blood that runs around the one block of the body again and again and keeps coming back to knock at the door where a man hands you an envelope that is also it saying yes, yes. And, and I think, um, I, I just think that that summarizes the poet, that seems to me to be who you are. It's your whole life. Poets are waiting for that ultimate acceptance note in the mailbox. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Saying yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or at least we used to. It's, it's yeah. often now on email, but. Can you pick yeah. another one that you like? Yes, and I did want to say, mm -hmm. I, I did want to give thanks properly okay. to the Kansas Humanities Council and to my predecessor, uh, previous poet laureate, Karen Miriam Goldberg, for shepherding the poet laureateship during high seas, adrift in ba very bad weather, to a proper shore, and that is the K Kansas Humanities Council, where it now has a new permanent home. and. Um, it's really a win-win for the state and its well, citizens. Well, it is, and I and I think that you're quite correct to give uh, um, uh, kudos to the Kansas Humanities Council because they do do wonderful things in this state. They do. They do. So I would Remarkable echo that. Things, I yes. would echo that. I would. Yes. Pick another poem. All right. Well, you had wanted to hear. Um, let's see. Finding the scarf. Yes, I, I like them. See, I, I went through and picked too. So, yeah, I, good. and then I said, yes, well, so well, 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 you, you can pick. Oh, please. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Finding, so this is a. We love to hike in the woods um, around our house and at, at the farm. Uh -huh. And one day we came upon a surprise. Mm -hmm. Finding the scarf. The woods, are the book, we read over and over as children. Now trees lie at angles, felled by lightning, torn by tornadoes, silvered trunks turning back to earth. Late November light slants through the oaks as our small parade, father, mother, child, shushes along. The wind searching treetops 
for the last leaf. Childhood lies on the forest floor, not evergreen, but oaken, its branches latched to a graying sky. Here is the scarf we left years ago, like a bookmark, meaning to return the next day, having just turned our heads toward a noise in the bushes, toward the dinner bell in the distance, toward what we knew and did not know we knew in the spreading twilight that returns changed to a changed place. Lovely. You know, I tell you another thing that sort of interests me is, first of all, how do you decide on the title of a, a book of your poems? Huh. How do you decide on titles for the poems? I mean, is, does it just sort of come? I'm a title person, so I love making <laughs> titles. Not only for my, I, I would like to have, in fact, I have, I'm working on a book of titles. I, I not only title, love to title, so all of my books have section titles because I have so many titles and I just love, titles is a microcosm of the poem. So it's, it's even, the poetry is a compression and distillation itself. Well, the title's a distillation of the poem. And I just love that process. And so I work with choreographers and photographers and artists and all kinds of people who are calling me and emailing me about working with them on their titles. And um, I mean, even nail polish. And I, I, I love to make them. Titles. Well, but, but see, you're, <laughs> you're, you're taking seriously by putting the best words in the best order here. Yeah. In a very small space. Yeah. On the head of a pin. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I read, oh, some time ago that there are contests of people that write short stories in 250 words mm -hmm. or, a, you know, and that's really what we're talking about here. And I've, I've read some of them over, a, oh, some years back. I, but they're, they're really good, right. and they are distilled so. down to the bare bones, as they say. I hope so, yes. Why do, you, why do you like titles? Is that just the way your mind works, or is that? It's just a further compression of the poetic of the process. Yeah, and, um, what, are, you, are you working on another book besides the book of titles now? Yes, well, I'm working on a number of books. I, I've just finished uh, my next book called Rewriting the Body, and I'm very excited about it. And um, so we'll see where that lands. What, tell me about rewriting the body. Is that poetry or uh, yoganetics? It's poetry. It's poetry. It's poetry. Well, and uh, well, in a sense, I mean, we are rewriting the body with every breath we take. So um, this is poetry that talks about uh, life in the body, mm -hmm. life, death, all the big topics. But it 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 lands firmly on the side of life, and I I think with. Uh, uh, its sense of humor intact. Good. Yeah. Keeping one's sense of humor intact is uh, very important, I think. I do. You know, you always, uh, you were talking about life, death, and whatever. You always seem to come down, or it seems to me, reading your poems, come down on the positive side. They're not dark. They're, uh, I, I read them as optimistic, your poetry. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I made a point you know, there. I, I, I was telling that. my husband as we left the house today, I, I feel, and this is a frequent experience, I feel I'm standing on the edge of a cliff. A lot of the time, I don't know if I'm going to fall or if I'm going to fly. Well, are you ready to do either? I guess that's the point here. Yeah, so optimistic, pessimistic, Yeah. I'm just standing here. Yeah, but I don't see your poetry as dark. Good. I, you don't intend it that way, do you? I don't intend, no. Because mm -hmm. I, you know, I see you as a, as a rather positive person that looks at life square on. Thank you. No, I do. I think that, um, and I think that's why um, kind of a novice like me, a regular person, likes to read your poetry. Thank you. Because it, it says something to a lot of people. And to me, Wyatt, that's what the Poet Laureate position is. It speaks to the people of, of our state mm -hmm. in, in some way, if they, if they take the time to read it, which I hope they do. Um, 
I, 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 while we still have a few minutes, I want to be sure we cover, I like spring cleaning too, if you don't mind. Okay. This is spring cleaning. A strand of wind along the spine pulls through lips and into sleeves, sets in motion hair corn leaves, a cotton wood, its wishing seeds, winter's sigh through knots of trees and folded arms of knock-kneed girls, gives way to spring and soon the plow breaks through the hardest earth behind your brow, a field unfurls. I think that's just lovely. Mm. I do. I, I, um, I notice too that, and I don't know if this is, you know, broad generalizations keep get one in trouble, but, but you like trees, you like earthy things, you like plants, those are the... Well, trees are great teachers, and, and they're, right, they're, they're right out our window if we're lucky. And so, you know, they're teaching us all the time. They're teaching us how to hold on, how to let go, how to grow, how to deepen. Well, and I, and I, don't you think that people who are fairly well adjusted um, <laughs> are able, well, <laughs> <laughs> such I mean, as, <laughs> do go yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. But, but I do think uh, we have to learn those lessons. It, as we move through life, we have to learn to grow and to learn to change and to learn to shed our leaves and grow new ones, if you will. And... Uh, Sometimes we even grow a bigger trunk as we get older. <laughs> but, well, but we yeah, are works in progress. Yeah, we're all a work in progress. And so that's, um, uh, so that I, I, but I noticed you like the, the, you know, you like to use the plants and the earth around you. And oh, I'm inspired by yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Well, what else are you doing besides the titles and the, Body poems. Right, you have several. On, on, can, how can you do that? What am I doing? How can you do that? What am I doing? Well, I'm touring Kansas. Um, yeah. And is that what you're asking? It, uh, no. I, well, uh, yeah, that too. Oh. What are you doing as you tour Kansas? I'm well. I'm talking to people about things that are important. I think. Um, so, you know, and as I've traveled not only around Kansas but around the country and the region, um, it's so interesting because I find that so many of us are reading nonfiction on a daily basis, newspaper, internet. So many of us are reading fiction on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And the numbers plummet when you get to poetry. Why is that? I don't know. Why, why is that? Why is poetry almost like a pair of shoes we left back in school? Do you think it's, it's uh, daunting for people? Maybe. Um, maybe it has to do with how uh, it was introduced to us as uh, chi in childhood with an emphasis on what it means. And I'm, I'm here to say it is not what a poem means. It's what a, that's the booby prize. That's the consolation prize. It's what a poem does. It's how it moves us. It's where it takes us. So, I mean, T.S. Eliot said, a poem can communicate before it's understood. So the goal is not to analyze, but to experience. And to feel. Yeah. To, to have an experience, a big experience in a small package. That's the beauty of the poem. And that's, that's what you talk about, that's how you write, and I think that um, what you've done is a number of things for our state, and, and for the country, but particularly for our state, because after all, you are the Poet Laureate of the state of Kansas. I think as you go around and read your poetry and encourage people, to, other people to read yours and other poetry as well, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of, of good things out there. Absolutely. Um, that you help them to raise their Oh, I don't know so many things. Their understanding of the world about them, uh, their ability to see. Um, I always think uh, people who write have a third eye, and they see things that many others don't see. Well, I think you're right. I, I mean, no, I, I think I would agree with you in that. Um, why leave poetry back in childhood when it can help us so? deeply through adulthood when we really need <laughs> some, some assistance here. And, and it does. Poetry helps us see. It slows us down. It helps us understand what's important. And it reminds us that we're not alone. We are not alone. And I have to say that it has been such a pleasure to have you, Wyatt Townley. Thank you. She Likewise. is the Port Laureate of the state of Kansas. And she, in every day and everything she does, she says to us, there is indeed 
a confluence of poetry and poetry in motion. Wyatt Townley, thank you. Thank and you. thank you for being with us. It's been fun. It's our community, you know.